everybody, welcome to X Penguin. Well, today we've got an Arch Toasty, which is everyone knows is the absolute best sort of toasty. So say hello, Arch Toasty. He's waving, he's waving. Hello, everyone. <laughs> now, as, <laughs> as some of you might I feel remember, like Gump when I do this. <laughs> as some of you might remember, uh, Arch Toasty, for some reason which we can't work out, even though he's literally like a guy who works at Red Hat and should know this, can't work out why we have a delay. So there's a little bit like of an old school, like, like you know, and this just in from satellite video type of delay. So if we talk over each other, it's not because we're rude. It's just because, like, he can't hear me. And as always, Arch Toast has been told, if he starts talking, finish. So we're not going, no, you go first. No, no, you go. No, I'll go. No, no, you go. So yeah, if he talks, he's going to talk over me, which is absolutely no, cool by you me. you hang up. <laughs> no, you hang up. You hang up. <laughs> so yeah, we're not late anyway, Hamish. We we hit streaming exactly six o'clock. Like the the, the the feed went live, so I did well. And um, why is Ice Toasty so rude? Uh, so yeah, anyway, welcome welcome to the stream, everyone. For those of you who it's his first, who it's your first time here, um, this is the show where we talk about stuff we've played using our Linux PCs, and then towards the end we talk about some stuff that I want to say news, but it's not really. It's just shit we found interesting. So there you go. Here we here we have at it. So as always, Arch Toasty, how the devil are you, sir? Devil are you? Doing doing well, doing well. Got out of uh, boot camp for uh, uh, Red Hat, so I passed all my tests, and I'm a certified architect and a certified engineer now. So pretty happy about that, and like actually starting my for real job at Red Hat. So things are starting. Wait, to, wait, hold to, on, back up, Arch Toasty's. Arch Toast is a whatever. certified architect and has never bothered mentioning this. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, you have to get like two certifications. Like you have to get the RHCE and the RHCSA in order to like continue to work there. Uh, so you have like three months to get it. Like uh, whenever you first start. Um, <clears throat> and those tests are real hard. Like they're like real hard. Um. Oh yeah, so, this is Red yeah, Hat stuff. I you're not. All of you're them, you're not and... talking about drawing buildings and shit, though. This is this is the mis. I was like, you're an architect. What? I was yeah, like, what? No, no it's okay. Not, that's, that's not at all. That's, yeah, that would have been. <laughs> I would have. I would have been very confused by all. That. I was like, Red go draw thing. buildings. Stop doing computers. Go draw buildings <laughs> and stuff. You don't. <laughs> we don't need you here. Go draw buildings. I can. I can. What well, he's, he's doing stuff. I don't know what he's doing. What's he doing? Is, is he drawing a building right now? I was going to draw a building. <laughs> He's drawing a building. building. That was all. That's the uh, extent that was, of my actual that was it. architectural that was it. skills. I, I drew a thing once. Um, it's, it's, it's a lie. I've never drawn anything. Um, yeah. So, so uh, as I know you've been busy with the Red Hat stuff, and you've been, well, we know you've been busy, um, but I dare say you've had a chance to play something. So you have, you have no time, right? You have no time. You have, you have, you, and you're like, I want to play something. I need to unwind. What did Arch Toasty choose to play? Ah, oh, all right. So this week and like the, maybe like the last two weeks or so, so I've been playing a lot of Fallout Four. We'll start with that one. Okay. Uh, so Fallout Four works in Lutris. It doesn't work with Proton yet. I don't oh. know why. Um, <clears throat> but it's. I mean, contrary to popular opinion, I feel uh, it's it's an okay game. I'll give it like a solid like seven out of ten on literally no basis of where those points came from. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, if, if you try not to compare it to other fallout games and kind of just go into it as a new experience and everything like that, it's, it's actually pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of hand holding, I would say in this game compared to other ones where it's just like, Oh, here's your powerful stuff and your companion dog and all of that stuff. Like within the first hour of the game, uh, spoiler alert. Um, but I mean, all in all, it's not that bad of a game. It's fun to just run around and shoot stuff and, you know, kind of play in the Fallout world. So it's, uh, I don't know, it kind of gets a bad rap, I think, but I feel like since Fallout 76 actually, like, happened and then was such a shit show that it's shined a new light on Fallout 4. So yeah, I, uh, I would say, you know, if you haven't played it yet, go ahead. I, I've played Fallout 3 um, as far as... it's on sale right now. Yeah, I've, everything's on sale right now. There's a Steam sale on. Uh, I've played Fallout 3 as far as getting through the birthday oh. party sequence, <laughs> and that left me super angry, so I didn't do that again. Um, and then I played a little bit of, of New Vegas, and, and I was like, this is enjoyable. I'm enjoying New Vegas. And then I, for some reason, I never went back to it. I crashed, oh. I think. I think it was a bit crashy. But yeah, I, uh, I, 
I didn't dis- oh. I didn't dislike New Vegas. New Vegas seemed quite good, you know, so I don't I don't know if that, you know maybe, maybe I should go. New back Vegas to is the best the best fallout that there is. I mean, I would say two, like the story of two is amazing, but if you ever go back and try to play two, it's like really, really effing hard to play. Uh <clears throat> it didn't stand up very well. And even with all the things that fix the bugs and like all the mods that make it like prettier and stuff like that. It's still, it's kind of a hassle to play. It's still great. I mean, it's got a great story and everything like that. Maybe just watch some YouTube videos and learn about the story. But it's like uh, that. And then, yeah, the newer ones, Fall of New Vegas is definitely the best because it's not made by. Uh, yeah, it's made by. Who did, but someone else wrote that game. Yeah. Uh, it's made by the people that made um, that made the Knights of the Old so Republic that, 2, I think, I want to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it's good. It's like, well, because like. In Fallout New Vegas, like your choices matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas in Fallout 3, and I would say even Fallout 4, it doesn't seem like any choice that you make really matters. It's just here's the story and it's going to kind of just be like this. And you have like maybe like four different endings or something like that. But New Vegas, like it's like everything that you do matters, like all the way up until the end uh, and could, you know, sway. I killed everybody. I killed everybody. All the way up through until the end. If I saw something alive, Uh, I shot it to death. That's it. I mean, I'm not sure if that's the right way to play. That's how I, I mean, you, what I did in Skyrim. You put me in a game with a gun, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot everything. And apparently, it was Obsidian that made, uh, the, the, according to uh, Cybrus, there it was Obsidian that made Fallout. Mm. Uh, yeah, New Vegas. They are the people. Obsidian. They are the people that did. Um, they are the people that did Knights of the Old Republic Two. I'm sure they are. So yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm correct there. I'm sure someone will tell me in a minute in chat. But uh, yeah, no, the Fallout Four looks good. It looks nice on the videos. I'm. I'm not hating what I'm seeing, but mm-hmm. I'm not. I I figured that I didn't I couldn't get through three and I never went back to New Vegas so maybe I'll I'll put it on the back burner it's not one I'll rush out and get right now but yeah it's been out a while now as well hasn't it yeah it's been out a while now yeah oh New Vegas has been out for like I think like ten years now I think or maybe not that long I think it came out in like 2012 2010 something like that uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can yeah, let's see if it's we can a great game it. I definitely would recommend that uh, Fallout New Vegas. Wow, you can buy Fallout New Vegas right now on Steam for fucking two pounds sixty nine three. That's insane. Um, yeah, that is that is quite buy mad. It. Yeah, buy I mean, I, I own it on GOG. I'm probably now. I'm, I'm probably gonna go and buy that on Steam right now. To be honest, I'm probably just gonna go and buy that on Steam. Do it. Because yeah, that that's a that's Do yeah. It. That's I, 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 everybody should you. go buy that game right now. Yeah, everyone it's should. Amazing. Yeah, in fact, let's 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 make sure chat has a link for this. Uh, so no one forgets. Also, apparently, uh, the RHCA stands for uh, Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator, not Architect. So I'm actually not an architect in any way. So uh, no, there we go. No, no, fuck <laughs> that right off. No, no, you're an architect, um, and the RH stands for IBM. So you're an IBM Certified Architect. Um, as we, we all know, the, R, the RH. Oh, there we go. Okay. Someone's got to have made that joke. It's yep, like Drew. Stands. Yep, Drew made that joke. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah they yeah they did yeah they did but yeah no everyone should go and buy fallout new vegas i'm probably gonna buy fallout new vegas even though i already own it because why why the fuck would i not buy it you know because that's so cheap so cheap so cheap indeed um anyway i i played i played i played a game i played a, li- a little bit of a game um this week uh, as soon as i find it on here the god damn it have i, have I not come up there you go i played uh a lot of the sims 3 this week like <laughs> Uh, like way more Sims Three than a human needs to play. Um, I bas- I literally got up this morning. I thought, should I go to work or should I call in sick and play The Sims Three? And I did go to work, but I seriously, could- I sat there for a minute. I was like, I could, I could play, I could play The Sims Three. I don't. They can survive without me at work. And yeah, I was, I was, yeah. That's how bad it's got. I'm literally, it's literally like affecting my life now. Um, today. I, I bought all the DLC I didn't have. I spent like £30 today buying DLC. Just I was like, fuck it, I'm just, just going to buy it. So I now own the complete Sims 3 and, and genuinely, I'm genuinely having a lovely time with it. It's insane. Um, it's so good. And it, I mean, I know it's not good. It is trash. But it's the best kind of trash, you know? It's like, it's fun trash. It's like the kind of trash it's, that you can literally play in forever. It's such a guilty pleasure. It is. It totally. It totally is Such a guilty, guilty pleasure. It totally is. I'm not even ashamed. I streamed it for two days this week, so I'm not even ashamed of this though. I'm like, I'm proud of my Sims love. 
I can't I can't stop it. Um, my sim so far she's uh my sim's love. Yeah, so far she's uh she's been she she's like she's got juiced. Uh, she went she went to play pool, got juiced, started to fight. She um she went to college. That was good. She she kissed she kissed the llama mascot at college. Um, the college is so boring. I just let her, I've let her get through that on her own. Um, she's moved house twice. She went on an adventure in France <laughs> where she went down a tomb and started like digging up shit and like it was proper scary. It was proper good. Um, yeah, my sim's like she's had a great life. She's had a better life than me. I'm I'm living vicariously through my sim at the moment. That's that that's my whole life. And my sim is my life. It's all this salt EA. I was gonna say that's like the point, right? I think so. I like, I don't know what the point of the Sims is. That's the thing I like about Second it. Life. Like I I really I don't know. It's 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 weird because I really like. like I'm not gonna lie, right? The Sims Three is literally loaded right now. Like like it's 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 quite literally loaded right now. It's 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 in the back. It's on another desktop right now, just <laughs> waiting for me. The moment I finish the podcast, I'm gonna go back. That's that's what's happening with. This. <laughs> it's it's really happening. It's really how bad I am. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty bad. But um, if you are interested, The Sims Three, the base pack is six pound twenty four on sale. You should totally buy it. Cause you bet this The Sims. Awesome, bad. See, I haven't played Sims since I was, I think, in like middle school. Like the first Sims, like my cousin and I used to play it like a lot. Um, <clears throat> but we would like we would play like different characters in there and like do it like that. So like I'd be like the dad and like the son or whatever and she would be like the mom and like the the daughter and we would like take turns taking control of them this is like sim one days this is a very long time ago um but yeah that's been basically my entire experience i've tried i think i tried to play sims too and i was just like this game not for me so <laughs> i uh i don't know i can't i can't find the appeal myself i for the game the first so, sims game it's the, the first Sims game is the last one I got really into. Like the first Sims game, I fucking loved the first Sims game. Right, there was some ridiculous shit you could do in that game. I feel like there was more stuff in the first Sims game than there is in the Sims Three, even with all the DLC. Um, but uh, it doesn't really work. It's like you're talking about a hassle to play with Fallout Two. The same thing with the Sims One. Like it's just a nightmare. Like honestly, it's just so stupid to Ooh. get this fucking work in now. It's insane. Um, so the Sims Three was where I went, and I was like, I was like, "Yep, this is good enough." It's not the good as Sims One in my mind, but it's still like, you know, I still feel like it's it's okay. I'm, I'm having a great time. Obviously, I, I bought, I spent like seventy pounds on the Sims in total. It's ridiculous. It's just insane how much money I spent on the Sims. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm all in. I'm is, all in. Is this the one? Can you be like? Can you be like the pets? Yeah, you like, can be can the you pets. Be like the yeah, like the cat. Yeah, and, like, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. You can nice. you can send you can go to college. Nice. You can go, you can hunt for ghosts. You can go on adventures. There's a whole underwater city you can explore. Um, there's time travel. You can go to the future and see your ancestors. I see your like your, your descendants and then fuck them. Um, oh. Yeah, why what? wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, there's like there's a lot to do in this. This game's content rich, but uh, it is it is quite literally um, it is quite literally like you know destroying my life at the minute because I'm just playing so fucking much of it. The moment this podcast over, I'm going back. But yeah, you should all. You should all check out The Sims. Uh, if you buy it and you want to play it in Proton, it won't launch, though. What you need to do is you need to go in the folder and just, like, rename the launcher to just anything else and then rename the uh, S3.exe to Sims, to, to, to the, the name of the launcher. I think Sims3.exe you rename to The Sims 3 Launcher and then it works, like, literally perfectly. There's, there's like, no caveats. It just, I've played, like, you know, 30 hours. It's fine. There's no issues whatsoever, whatsoever with it. So it's, it's, it's a good recommend. Definitely, definitely good recommend on my part, anyway. But uh, you have played. Tell me about Wargrove, though. Tell me about Wargrove. Sorry. Tell me about you've played Wargrove this week. Okay. All right. So I was walking past uh, Sudo's desk and I looked over and he was watching someone play this game. And I was like, whoa, that looks really, really cool. Like uh, one of my favorite games in my entire life is Shining Force 2. Mm -hmm. Like I used to have, when everybody had a me Game too. Boy, I had the freaking Sega Nomad. Like the, like, yep. I don't know if you know what this thing is. Yep. It's the Nomad. It's like the little handheld thing. And I, the only thing that thing was ever filled with was Shining Force 2. And I played that game so freaking much. And then Advance Wars came out. And then I played that game so freaking much. And I was looking over his shoulder and I was like, oh, man. Uh, like, this looks really, really good. What is that? And he was like, oh, it's Wargroove. And I was like, I'm going to check that out. So it doesn't work natively on Linux. Uh, it does... Steam for some reason thinks that it does work natively because yeah, uh, it won't force it into Proton. Um, but 
you have to like uh with the new like beta yeah look at that nomad nice yes that that's when everybody had a game boy that's what i had um but yeah anyway so you have to force it to use a uh, proton like uh with the new beta client and stuff like that how you can like force regular games yeah. to run through proton and uh have it work like that man that like the aesthetic of that is just so nice like look at that shit uh but yeah so you force it through there and it works great oh you also have to put um skip intro in the properties uh because i guess the intro title screen thing yeah it's like, drm control players windows and stuff. only and yeah. like f stuff up yeah so once you put those two in it runs flawlessly uh you can even play it full screen if you want to and it is awesome like it's really great uh i mean i've played like two two and a half hours of it i think and uh, i played through i was just doing the campaign and it's it's just like advanced wars basically like you have like your commanders um and then you have like your different units and the different units have like different like critical powers and each terrain tile is uh has different like pluses or negatives or stuff like if you hide in a forest then you know you have extra defense or if you're standing on a mountain like only a couple of creatures can like go over the mountains and stuff like that so excuse me this looks this looks great um, it's really great yeah like, I... and it's very strategic but the best part of it is that it's multiplayer you can have up to four people playing at once and it's cross play multiplayer wow. so i think it came out on the switch so you can play it on switch and then you can also like cross play multiplay uh so that is a thing too so i just uh playing through the campaign it's like i don't want to say it's simple um but i mean where i'm at it's pretty easy at this point but uh and they all, oh, uh, I just saw that like go on the bottom just to digress for a second. It has, uh, this game is published by Chucklefish. They didn't mm -hmm. actually make the game, but uh, if you remember, they also made, um, or well, Chucklefish actually made Starbound. Yeah. And the Florin race, the plant people, yeah. are in this game. Uh, they're, they're called Florins, and they're like actually a tribe of people in this game that you can play uh, or fight or whatever. Um, so it's yeah, it uh, it, it's 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 real good, and the multiplayer thing is definitely what sold it for me. And it looks like there will be eventually a native Linux client. Um, so I'll probably no. buy it again just to support like the Linux part of it. Not gonna so, lie, right? But, uh, this, yeah, this this looks like uh, something I'm gonna buy on the Switch. Um, I really want to play this, but um, I think I'm probably gonna buy this on the Switch because it looks like something I'm playing in my hand. It looks like something just better suited to that style. I think. I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, just play it while you poop. It'll be really good. I poop a lot, so. <laughs> but no, this looks this looks oh, great. There this, you go. This, yeah, there, there you go. This looks this looks really good. I mean, like this is really nicely put together. You're right. There's I hadn't really looked too closely at it, but you're right. It's it it's literally like shining force. Um, that it's really nice. I'm I'm gonna have to look into this. And uh, it, it's fifteen pounds. So I, was, I assume it'll be about like, about the same on the Switch. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna pick me this up. I need to play this. But if I pick it up on P, if I pick it up on Linux on PC, I could stream it. So that's uh now I'm torn. God damn it! I've talked myself out of it now. I need to go and buy the PC now. God damn mm -hmm. it! Yeah, you can build a castle. What was that? I just sort of think we. I mean, a it castle. actually. I mean, it, uh, yeah. Apparently, like once you get further, you can like it's got all kinds of like mechanics and stuff like that that I haven't even experienced yet. So yeah, apparently it has like some rampart. I don't know if you ever played that game like from way long time ago. Uh, where you can like build like whatever like a little rampart castles and like little defense things. So because it's just like um, advanced wars where you have like little buildings that do particular things and you can take over buildings and get more money. And then you have like a barracks where you can like create troops and stuff like that, like mid game or like every round and stuff like that. So it's uh definitely from what I've played, it's a great game and I would very much recommend it. Yep, I, I'll wait. Oh, hold on, it's playing the same video again. The same video's only there twice. I'm gonna get the pictures now. Yeah, this is good. I'm, I'm, so Chuckovich came out on the first of February, um, and it's priced at fifteen pounds ninety nine. And yep, Chucklefish and Friends bundle, which is which is again, that's probably more at thirty nine pounds. It's a bit more, yeah. Um, what's the requirement? Let's scroll into requirements. So you need uh, an i. It recommends an i five four gig of RAM. Yeah, so it's basically got the same requirements as a Mega Drive emulator. So yeah, that that should run anything. And uh, does it get does it get golden? What does it get on the? Uh, let's check the Proton DB. Proton DB, War Groove. I'm doing I'm doing the, I'm doing the, the important. It's also player. very tiny. It's only like four hundred megabytes or something wow. like that. Like three hundred and eighty megabytes. That's it. That's like how big the game is. It's very tiny. Very tiny. 
So. Yeah. so it's trending silver and gold. You just have to <laughs> just rename, just skip the intro uh, and launch options, and that's it. There you go. So just add to Proton and skip the launch options. Uh, skip the intro launch options. So, yep. That's good. That's good. Hex Fiber. What? Oh, oh, Fedora Toasty and Hex Fiber. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. It's a good, good work. <laughs> good work. <laughs> Uh, Sudo Shred said, managers think I do things. I don't know. Ask Arch Toaster. He's sitting next to me and knows I don't do shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you should, like, say this on stream, to be fair. Um, a Toasty's like, no, I work hard all day. I never I never sit with Sudo watching video <laughs> watching video games. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, played, I, played a little, <laughs> I played a little bit more of uh of at the gates as well this week um just to make i did that thing where i was like i'm not sure like i feel like i was mean to this game and i, I want to make sure that my feelings are my feelings and i didn't want to i didn't want to like i don't know go i wanted to check i guess you know we like maybe i'm in a different mood now um no still don't like it i still don't like i played again still don't like it I, I feel like it needs massive amounts of patches before it's playable and each time i play it i like it even less so I started off being like, eh, it's kind of good, but not for me. And now I'm to the point where I'm like, don't buy it. Um, so, which is interesting. That game makes me hate it more with exposure, which is probably not what they want. Is this the one that was uh, made by the, <clears throat> the, Civ, the Civ guy? Yeah, yeah this, like, is, this the one. is like his yeah. own game that like is just like more chill and you don't really have like as much control over stuff or something like that. Yeah, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the Civ 5 guy, John Schaefer. Um, and yeah, it, it is very much less going on than Civ, but to the point where it, there's not enough game there. Game. Hmm. Oh, this is like the menu section, like revolutionary menus within menus game. There's nothing revolutionary about tooltips. Like, like I know, like I've said this so many times, but it pisses <laughs> me off. It literally says, right at the gate, features revolutionary user interface, which utilizes tooltips in tooltips for the very first time. Making it easier to learn without sacrificing gameplay depth. Oh. I swear to God, I've played like 50 games that have got tooltips inside tooltips. Fucking Diablo does that shit. Come on, dude. There's nothing, there's nothing, you can't say you invented that. That's bollocks. It's just not true. It's just a lie. Yeah, tooltips on tooltips on tooltips. I mean, it's Jeez. just not true. It's just not <laughs> fucking true. It's just, the, it's just like, I can't, the, the thing is though, the annoying thing is, I know I've seen it many times before. Um, I just can't quite think of an example because I might make a video where I just like go through all the games that have. So in fact, challenge to YouTube: if anyone can tell me a game that uses tooltips inside tooltips, so you bring up a tooltip and they can click on another tooltip. If anyone can show me examples of that, right? I will. I will take your. I will take your name and we'll put it in the video and we'll crowdsource proving that that's bollocks. And when we make the video, we will write a strongly worded email that says, "I ain't got anything against you personally, dude, but you didn't fucking invent tooltips." Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll make it yeah anyone has got examples i want to see i want the to see right examples. british thing to do it just We're pisses me off a strong letter yeah it's, it's like well there's nothing else you can do really i mean like like it's it's I, we all know it's a lie but yeah i'm, I'm no I'm, i refuse to accept it i need examples of games that have tooltips inside tooltips because if i'm remembering this wrong and this guy did invent this right then i want to set fire to the earth because it's like it's stupid <laughs> it's <just> so stupid <laughs> yeah take that uh, john schaefer if he filed a patent in the US for that, he can until somebody proves him wrong after paying a shitload of money for lawsuits. I don't care, Silmeth. I want to out this I want to out this yeah. bitch on YouTube. I don't care. I want to show evidence that he's wrong. And I hope whoever sues him uses my video. <laughs> Just, I don't even know why this annoys me because I haven't got anything against the guy. He seems like a nice guy. I don't even know why I'm so pissed off. Where I'm like, you you can't you can't take credit for this. It's just not true. So yeah. You want to see Clippy and Clippy for a video game? Uh, pff, maybe, maybe. I just want to. I want. I want examples, guys. If anyone can think of examples, I need. I need the video. Show me examples. I'm. I'm going to look for my own as well. But I'm sure Master Orion did it. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure Stellaris has tooltips inside. I'm going to go. I'm going to do this. This is my mission this week. I'm yeah, I was. That's what I was thinking of. Is yeah, I'm pretty sure Stellaris does because that's a pretty informationally heavy game. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, but yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, pretty sure they do it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop ranting about this. Um, you should you should tell us about um, no, that's The Sims Three. We've already talked about The Sims Three. You should tell us about Ballist oh Ballistic Overkill. How's that going? How's that doing? So, yeah, there you go. I would find something. All right, I oh yeah, I always try to uh, you know revisit this game because it has such a special place in my heart 
you know, this is this is the game I learned how to play mouse and keyboard shooter games on. And uh, yeah, just don't don't fucking buy this game and don't play this game. Why? Uh, I don't. <clears throat> I was like, all right, cool. So it's been, I don't know, like three or four months since I've tried to play this game. And last time I played it, the Vulcan didn't work at all. Like, because you can force mm-hmm. Vulcan and it makes it look a lot prettier and get more frames. It looks cool and everything like that. Uh, and yeah, that's totally broken. Nothing renders. Well, your person doesn't render and everything looks like you're having a giant acid trip, like while you're playing. Um, and then whenever you just play the open GL version, it like, you can play one round and as soon as you die, you can't respawn at all. Uh, you, you can't. And this has been going on for like a week now because I kept like revisiting it and trying to see if like it was working or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to just get the windows version and then force it through Proton and play it that way. Okay. The same fucking thing. Like no. this game just don't it just doesn't work at so all. So it's broken uh, on Windows yeah, as well. It just it doesn't work. Wow. It well it has well, I don't want to say it has to be because I was forcing it through Proton, but yeah, it just doesn't work. Like if anybody has this game and like wants to give it a try, because I'm pretty sure it's on sale right now. Uh but if you don't already have this game, don't go buy it. Um <laughs> If anybody does actually have this game, give it a try and see if you can actually respawn back into a match because I haven't been able to for the last week. Um, I can play, play one round until I die, and then boom. So, yeah, it's it always seems to go that way. Like, they ramp it up because I'm in the Discord and everything too. They have like a like a social media marketing, not marketing, but like someone that's like, oh man, check out this cool ballistic overkill player and look at how great he's doing. And then like spotlight of the week or whatever. But and it seems like everything's going great and really cool. And then you go to play this game and it's just like, fuck you, you suck. Uh yeah. So it's not by respawn. Oh yeah, no. It's uh yeah, whenever I'd go to respawn, it just stops. It's just like, nope, we're not gonna let you play anymore. You can click on anything. You have to exit the game and then go back into a new game, and then you only get to play until you die. And then yeah, basically their only fixes have been adding female characters. Like that's it. It's just like, oh, we're gonna give this guy boobs. And then that's pretty much it. So, I mean, that's very good, disappointed. That's a good very design move. You should. Oh, okay. Discord just died. Okay. No one panic, right? Discord suddenly vanished. All right. No one is coming back. I promise. It's going, ah. There you go. There, oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, Discord just vanished. Um, it does that. I don't know why. It doesn't give me an error message of any sort. Discord just sometimes vanishes. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're back anyway we're back sorry guys uh that was yeah i must discord's just the worst discord's just fucking shit um anyway sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the I'm gonna stop oh, bashing discord so, uh... yeah seriously it, it can hear you it can hear you yeah, so we're... with that being a terrible review let's talk about how awesome you did with the chroma key from across the world oh yeah like, look at this professional yeah, yeah and it even survived a restart amazing OBS. this isn't me yeah, I'm I'm doing that at my end. Um, this might be I, I, I like this is the most long distance chroma key I've ever done. Cause before I've done this to Arch Toasty, like my longest chroma key was um a like like was was a sheet that was back here on a frame. So like this is the this is a big deal for me being able to chroma key someone across the world, which is like which also shows that actually like the the OBS's chroma keys got really good because this used to be shit and now this is really good. So good good work OBS for improving that. But uh, yeah, that's quite good, right? Yeah, <laughs> he disappears at work job, as well. Good OBS in general. <laughs> yeah, you good job. OBS is great. Yeah, uh, green skins are overrated. Yeah, no, I know. Like Nasui, I'm I'm kind of torn because like I feel like I feel like <sighs> I'll be bringing back the green screen on my channel, um, because I'm doing some rearranging in here, and when I do, I probably like I don't. I feel like it won't be a backdrop that's like particularly useful to streaming. Um, I'm going to like put some move some stuff around. I'm going to have a sofa back there and stuff. So I'll probably bring the green screen back at some point because if you want to sort of like not so much hide what's behind you, but you don't feel like it's good for streaming, then a green screen is the best way of dealing with that. I think. Um, but realistically, it's like I like I'm just lazy, man. I'm just so lazy. I just like this is this is just like m- m- you know where I do it. So I don't know. But uh, green screens are important because they give back important game real estate i don't want to see your room i want to see the game see like yeah like i agree i agree with i agree with pseudo shred on that but at the same time i like seeing where streamers live i like seeing their house i like seeing what's around them like i enjoy the show and tell of, of, of a stream so like for me i'm not there just for the game i'm there for the personality as well so i don't know i feel kind of like 
I feel kind of like I like it, you know? Like, I, I, like, I like both ways, but uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, I like being P.K. Thomas seeing inside your house. Yeah, fam, I mean, I'm like that as well. I'm, I like that. Like, like I can see right now, you guys can't see it because of the chroma key, but there's a lot of shit behind Arch Toasty right now. <laughs> there's a lot of shit there's behind There's a lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of shit. Of shit. Yeah. It's like, wow, it's 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 quite astonishing, actually. Just on the sides, each side of where I've cut off the green screen, I can see just, like, like piles of shelves and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's 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 beautiful. <laughs> It's really nicely focused, actually, as well. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so ballistic overkill. I'm going to test that as well. I'm going to find out. It, it, we need to raise awareness that if ballistic overkill is broken for most people, ev for everyone or for most people, we probably should like raise awareness not to buy it, and we should probably pester the developers a little bit. So we should probably test that. Yeah. So anyone wants to test that and get again, get back to us. Let us know uh, through Mastodon or through Discord. Um, assuming mine doesn't vanish, let us know because I, I'm interested to see how many people got this problem. Um, <laughs> Arch Toasty behind Arch Toasty. Okay, Arch Toasty. The behind Arch Toasty is, is shit emojis. I thought you were doing like an Arch Toasty behind the music thing there. Like Arch Toasty behind the music, which is which would have been great. Mm. Yeah, behind the green screen, one man. Um, like dude, like Cybrus, right? I I shit you not. I've told this story before. Um, like Pseudo Shred literally found my house on Google Earth by putting together clues about what I told that where I lived. He literally found my actual front door. Like, 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 seriously. That's Shooter Shred did that, yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. I've already found his Google Street View before. Yeah, there you go. I'm not, like, I'm not at all secret. Like, if people want to bring things to my house, if you bring pizza, I'll let you in. It's really not a problem. It's, it's no problem for me at all. It's fine. I'm like a six foot six Viking dude. I eat, worry, I am not worried about someone coming to, like, you know, pick on me. It's not, it's not a concern I have. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I I got I played two more things this week, all right? And I know like I don't want to go on too much here, but I played um I hate this fucking game title. Spin Mortality or Spin Mortality. I'm not sure what they're going for there. But this is supposed to be a um a cyberpunk management game, right? So I see the words cyberpunk management, right? And I go, that sounds like something Hex wants. That sounds like something Hex wants, right? Um I bought the game. And I played the game. I, I, my first load up was on video. So I played for 40 minutes on that, and the video's 30 minutes long. So I played for a total of 45 minutes. Um, by the end of the video, I think it was pretty obvious that I was not at all enamored with this, uh, with, with this, <laughs> with, with this game. It's, uh, first of all, um, management games are good because you get to manage things and then see the results of your management in flavor text and in flavor videos, and you just get like a glean into the things, you, into the effects of things you're doing and having. That's why some of the best management games show you like your, your they show you your area uh, as graphically rendered, and they show you your, um, yeah, they show you things in the world, where this one is all done on a, like a computer rendered map, um, so it looks like a digital, like, looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a strategy map of some sort. Um, so, you're running a multinational corporate, like a global, maybe multi-planetary corporation, and your job is to research stuff and manipulate the public and manipulate governments and, you know, and strive towards your end goal, which is immortality. Um, however, that's not fucking cyberpunk. That's not what cyberpunk is. Like, cyberpunk is always about, like, street-level stuff, right? Because even though in, in Blade Runner, we're all aware there was mega corporations, right? But the mega corporations wasn't the thing that you would call cyberpunk. It's walking through the rainy streets filled with neon chasing robots. It's the bartender with the robot arm, you know? Cyberpunk is grassroots by nature, right? You have to have, like, the, the definition of cyberpunk, as William Gibson put it, who he like basically invented the modern genre he's like it's high technology and low lifestyle it's the two extremes right it's like so you live you know you live you live in a you live in a box on the street but you've got a robot leg you know it's that sort of, of mix of things that make cyberpunk so i don't think running a corporation is cyberpunk it's dystopia but i wouldn't say it's cyberpunk so that was my first criticism about the game um but then like the fact there's absolutely no flavor text means that after 20 minutes of playing this game I was literally bored out of my fucking face, right? I was so fucking bored because I was like, the numbers are going up, but there's like, I'm not seeing any of the results of what I'm doing anywhere. I'm not even seeing still photographs that tell me I'm doing. I'm seeing no feedback at all. And after 30 minutes, I, I well, after 45 minutes or so, I just refunded it. I just completely had enough of it. And I was like, I'm never going to play this again. This is just genuinely bad. Um, but it's getting mostly positive on Steam. So I think 
Maybe I've misunderstood something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone else can tell me. Okay, it's immortality. It's a copy. It's not even... Okay, so it's, it's literally the game Immortality, apparently, so Pseudoshred saying. Is that a game on Steam, Pseudoshred? Okay, so, yeah. It's apparently. Immortality. Okay. Interesting. Uh, is that, is that, I've never even heard of this game. Yeah, so it's not... Okay, Ashes of Immortality. No, I think it, okay. he was just trying to... Oh, okay, oh, okay. It. Oh, I thought, I, th I, thought, I thought for a second <laughs> you were saying there was a game called Immortality and it's a rip-off. Um, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not cyberpunk. Yeah, it's not cyberpunk. That's my main thing. And like, I get like, I, I not thing is, I think in the comments of the video, people was under the impression I don't like management games. I'm fine with that. I'm quite happy to play a management game. There's, I've got no nothing against them. But the the problem with the problem with management games is you need that constant feedback. You need to see results of what you're doing constantly, even if it's in the form of text or you know it, it's there. Yeah, I'm saying the premise they start you with is to copy your brain into the internet for immortality. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So I see what you're saying, Sudish Red. I literally thought you meant there was a game called Immortality uh... that ripped off. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, you will st you will still die. Uh, yeah. Um, no, yeah, no, I, I get there as well. That's that's yeah. I agree with all that. It's, there's nothing about this game that's cyberpunk in my opinion. Um, it's neon. It's dystopian. But yeah, basically, guys, I would strongly recommend not buying it. Is my point here. I uh, I don't re I've only re ever refunded like three games, <laughs> so this is one of them. So it tells you everything you should need to know. The toasty, are you gonna play this? Is this something you wanna look at? Absolutely not. This does not look like my kind of game at all. Uh, just yeah, I'm not into. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the last like management styled game that I've played, and uh, I just can't think of any because it's not my thing. Not uh not what i like to do i mean the cyberpunk i enjoy that but apparently it doesn't even have that so this game is just wrong for me in general so yeah um <laughs> pseudo shred the uh the, the the argument of whether uh, if you make a copy of yourself and it's in and the copy is immortal is that still you being immortal is actually like a, a philosophical debate in itself so even though the premise itself i agree with you is bollocks i think it's not it's not flawed it's like it's got it's got rooting that makes sense but uh yeah it's yeah i'm not yeah, I'm I'm not not a fan of this. My, my my yeah, I feel like I wasn't harsh enough in my video because when I made the video, I was I was like I was still sort of mulling over the thoughts, and I feel like it's only after I come away from it and thought about it, I was like, no, that was shit, um, and I feel like I was far too nice in my video. So I might I might go and do a correction. And go, this game was shit. Is my whole correction. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, and this, <laughs> this game was fucking terrible. Do not buy it. Yeah, dude, this game is fucking terrible. Maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should get a blog and on the blog just have a list of shit. Like this is the shit that I just think is unplayable. This is unplayable shit. Um this game can be right up there, mostly because it's fucking stupid name. I mean, it's two ends that's supposed to look <laughs> like the word spin and the word mortality, but they also want you to read the word immortality. I, I don't know what the fuck they think they're doing. It's fucking stupid though. Um, yeah, I think they're tight. They're, they're, their logo alone is enough to piss me off. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link in chat if anyone does want it. Yeah, I feel like oh yeah, I feel, I'm gonna email them next as well. Right after I've emailed John Schaefer to tell him he didn't invent. I'm gonna be John Schaefer. You didn't invent tooltips. Spin mortality. Your logo's stupid. And your game's not cyberpunk. I feel like. <laughs> Make a top ten shit list of the year. Yeah. So many strong worded emails being written this week yeah this week wants me to make a top 10 a top 10 shit games of 2019 i feel like i feel like i could this year i feel like this year's on the way you know it, it, maybe it's possible uh anyway uh paladins <laughs> the year of the shit yeah uh paladins uh worked this year this this year this week uh last week we reported that paladins works in uh in in uh works in proton and i played about 15 hours of it in proton I was having a lovely time, and then last night, sometime, it stopped working. Ta-da! Uh, so, yeah, that's a thing that happened. Um, it stopped working entirely because of the I anti cheat. Interesting. See, I actually have a pretty cool story about this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned this whenever, but when I went to DreamHack, these are the developers that I talked to for like an hour and a half about Steam Play. Uh, I talked to one of the developers and one of the artists for the game. 
uh, while I was at DreamHack, and they we were like, or I was like, yo, yeah, there's this thing called Steam Play, and it's really cool. And they were like, oh, we've never heard of this. And I explained it to them. And then I was like, oh, but it's probably mainly just the anti-cheat that's doing it. And they're like, oh, we should take a look at that and work on it. And I was like, oh, cool. That's a very dumbed down version of our conversation. But uh, yeah, that uh, I talked to them for, yeah, probably like an hour and a half. So you're um, the reason it worked in the first place. It didn't work for a week. I, but you're the reason it worked, is what you're saying. I mean, I... I'd like to think so, but you know, just I'm just some guy on the internet. <laughs> just some guy yeah, who works did, at Red Hat and was at DreamHack. I think, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> I uh, yeah, no, but yeah, I talked to them. It was a great conversation. The two dudes that I talked to, they were really super cool, uh, and they're like, were just like, oh, we don't even really know about Linux. Like, we don't know shit about that. Uh, I was just like, oh well, here you go, bro. Let me slip you some Linux knowledge into your brain hole. Did you give um, them that USB then, key. Yeah, so that happen yeah i did i gave away too i was like here you go man here's like a usb 1.0 i'm still so disappointed in like the very terrible quality of the usbs that we had there but uh yeah i was like here give this a try maybe they did maybe they just they were like this works on fedora we'll just leave it alone it's all good so but uh no i don't know i guess uh i don't want to say that i had a part in that but i did talk to them about linux and the fact that having an anti-cheat is stupid so well i mean that. i mean the multiplayer <laughs> multiplayer competitive games need some form of a system for detecting cheats what they shouldn't be doing is licensing this out to other companies uh that's the part that's stupid they should uh, they should most definitely work on their own solution for this otherwise like literally you've got no control you're building your garden in someone else's garden it's ridiculous um but uh pseudo shredding chat they just pointed out that someone on reddit uh email or anti-cheat and supposedly they're saying uh yeah uh basically yeah this is the thread i've linked here um, and the actual item Pseudoshred's talking about there is some guy emailed them and they replied with, thanks for reaching out. While uh, Easy Anti-Cheat already support native Linux games, unfortunately, it's not compatible with Steam Play emulation yet. We are currently working with Valve to bring the support for Steam Play as well. However, this time we cannot promise a release date. Our apologies for the inconvenience, despite the troubles. I hope you had a great day. Um, that is very hopeful. And last time someone emailed I anti cheat, the result, the answer was we don't support Let's Piss Off, basically. So there, we've got confirmation now, assuming this can be believed. And I don't see a reason why we wouldn't believe it. Um, the wording and the verbiage uh-huh. looks legitimate. They are working with Valve. So that's essentially confirmed that I anti cheat are working with Valve, um, uh, which has been a rumor up until this point. Um, and yeah, and it's it looks, I would guess, if I was honest, that, that I anti cheat working with Steam. Um, steam play was part of an internal test i would guess that they tweak some things to see what happens and as a coincidence the version of anti-cheat that paladins used was the version that was tweaking and testing um i doubt it was ever intentional um i feel like we almost like we noticed something you know that we shouldn't have noticed there because uh, they would have to test this on scale um and i feel like maybe that's what happened uh, i've got no, nothing to back that up but that's just sort of the sort of vibe i get from the whole conversation um but yeah the, they don't sort of they must be aware that people was playing this game on linux and then suddenly decided to retract that so yeah i, I do think it's very interesting and I'm, I'm pleased that people are doing the work here in emailing yeah it's a good theory too and i mean i'll hold my breath for it i mean it seems pretty well worded and basically like you said they're not just like well fuck you <laughs> yeah. don't use linux yeah so, which is uh, a big turnaround promising but, yeah, I was I, I was so pissed off because I know people go Paladins is just another Overwatch clone. I really fucking like Paladins. I like Overwatch more, but I think Paladins is a separate game with a different play style, and I really enjoy Paladins. Um, so I've been playing loads of Paladins this last couple like the last week and a half, um, and I I really enjoyed it. So f- the fact it's suddenly not working kind of makes me sad. So I really hope this gets fixed soon because I was I was getting back into Paladins. I was on board again with Paladins. I was like, yeah. A weekly paladin night is what I need in my life. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's hoping it's temporary. I want to get on it. It looks really good. It, I've I mean, never played it before. It's but Overwatch. Yeah, it really it's literally Overwatch, right? But you have to pick your character at the start of a game, and because of that, you can't change character in game. It means whatever loadout you have, you're stuck with, which really changes your dynamic. It really changes things because if there's one guy that's the math that's got a massively overpowered character for the zone. Um, you, you have to gang up with him. You have to tackle that problem as a group. 
Um, also, you can customize your character with loadout cards. So you can get a healer and you can put all your points into his gun. So you can have someone who you think is a healer walk up to you with a rocket launch, with you know, a weapon that does damage or a rocket launcher. So it, it, it changes expectations. So you know what everyone's skills are. You just don't know what their strong point's going to be when you encounter them. So I have a lot of love for it. I think it's just different enough from Overwatch to stand out on its own. And I, I think that most people at cursory glance would oh, be yeah. like, that's an Overwatch knockoff. And there's always someone in chat that goes, but Paladins was, was being developed before. And no, yeah, it was. It was. But then they literally, it was a bad game. And they saw Overwatch and then changed everything to make it more like Overwatch. So that doesn't stand up to scrutiny. But, you know, it's still a good game, even though it is very Overwatch knockoff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of over Overwatch right now. I had a terrible experience with it. So I'm just going to... I haven't played it in like... Uh, I don't know. I've played like two games, but... What's your term? I, all right, so <clears throat> I was like, I was like, hey, you know what, Arch Toasty, I'm gonna be number one and go platinum in in Overwatch or whatever that is, super double platinum, top 500. And I was like, you know what, I'm really gonna do this. I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos. I'm gonna get real good. I'm gonna play competitive. I'm gonna be real good. Uh, so yeah, now first I t- like totally tanked my SSR or whatever that is. Anyway, I suck at Overwatch. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. So I was like, man, like, how am I going to get, like, how am I going to climb out of this, like, shithole that I've got myself into? So I found that you can, like, join games. Like, people can create games and, like, that are competitive and stuff like that. And then you can join with them. So everybody's, like, on board. It's like, oh, we got microphones. We're all going to be playing certain roles. Like, yay, that. So it's like, we're all on board with, you know, not trying to suck during this round and do our own thing. We all kind of understand that we're a team and we're doing it. So I ended up getting with uh, one of uh, <laughs> show us the dolly where they touched you, nice cybers. Um, it was all in the front and also the back area in my groin region. That's where I got touched, and it was sad. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I was like, oh sweet. So they were like, it said like road to bronze, and I was like, yeah, man, these guys are they really want to like they were all super high level. I was like, these guys, I'm gonna be on their team, and I'm gonna be their tank, and I'm gonna kick ass and be really awesome. So what I didn't realize is that they were all, I think, silver players and they were throwing games intentionally so they could get down to bronze because that makes so much fucking sense. Um, Yeah, so I played one game with them and I was like, oh man, and they were like, Toasty, get off the point, like get off the point. And I was like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I'm I'm just trying to play the game the way that it's supposed to be played. And they were like, get off the point. Can you not read like the title? It's like, it says road to bronze. And I was like, oh, I thought you meant like we're doing so badly and we have such a low number that we're trying to get up higher into bronze. And they were like, no, we're trying to throw games. And I was like, I want to kill everybody on this team. So anyway, I did that, and then I ended up getting looped into like a second game with them, which they also threw. So that's two losses already. And then I was like, fuck these guys. Like, I'm going to go play like with a different team, basically. So I chose like another team that was like doing the thing and like joining competitive. And bro, of course, they're on the opposite team. All of them are on the opposite team. And I was like, yes, I got a win under my belt. Um, So let me rewind actually for a second. Uh, so I got really kind of upset at the fact that they were throwing a game and uh, your boy kind of talked a little bit of shit uh, towards them because uh, I was a little upset. And anyway, so now I'm playing against them. And then he started and to stop throwing super games. super good at Overwatch. <sighs> yeah. So I, I played with the, and I was like, oh, well, it'll just be this game. And bro, they stomped the shit out of us. Cause I was like, oh, I typed into the thing. I was like, oh, they're throwers, everybody. Like, it's okay. Like, we're going to be good. I was on them. I was with them for two games. Like, they threw every game. Like, this will be an easy win for us. And then they were like, oh, Arch Toasty, I see you're on that team. Like, oh, you better. And then they were like, oh, your team, uh, sorry, your team, but we're about to beat the fuck out of this guy. And I was like, oh, darn. So I lost that round. And then I played another match. <laughs> I played another match with this team. And we got fucking, we got placed with them again. And they beat the fuck out of us again. Uh, and these are competitive matches, so you can't just leave. So, and then I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to go play with a totally not with anybody just quit just gonna i'm just gonna click quick play really fast and Same i did people. that and then bro i got with two of them i got with two yeah i got with two of them <laughs> on the opposite team and they still beat the fuck out of me so i was like god damn it and yeah i haven't played overwatch in like a month so i was like shit but yeah that's uh well that my bad experience with overwatch i mean i'm I mean, trying as hard as i can to like not the, play it 
What you have to take away from this is don't talk shit on online games because it always bites you in the ass is the first thing to take away from this. Um, secondly, those people should... I mean, what they're doing there is they're dropping down so they can get up to silver so they can get more loot crates. That's what they're doing. They're dropping down so they can go back up and get more loot crates faster. Um, so if they can drop all the way down a whole tier, oh. if they can go up a tier, they unlock loot crates. It's like crazy. Every time they level up, they're unlocking loot crates. So what they was doing was loot crate farming and using using the, the 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 you know using the competitive play to do it, which is probably bannable. I would guess that'd actually get them banned if Blizzard noticed that. But they'd have to do it for a while before Blizzard. They'd have to go back and forth a lot before Blizzard would care. I think. But yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, uh, Hamish said Overwatch is dying. Um, yeah, Overwatch has, ever since it's been released, has had like, has literally like dipped. And then there'll be like a, a new character, it'll go up again. Um, or there'll be like the uh, the, the champions, the Overwatch World Cup will start, it'll go up again. Um, Overwatch has always been up and down like crazy. Um, it's definitely not dying, it's probably in a down spiral at the minute. But uh, Blizzard will literally throw money at that game until it lives again. They will not let that die. If they have to make it free to play, though, well, there's no way Overwatch is dying. Blizzard games do not die. They get supported for like ten years. Well, they have, they have a new hero coming out very mm. soon. Uh, I think within the next few months or maybe next season. Uh, yeah. They have another hero coming out. Uh, I don't know who it's going to be. Uh, there's a lot of speculation, but yeah, whenever Ash came out, she was way overpowered. Mm -hmm. um, I think they nerfed the crap Still out is. of her. Um, but yeah, there was like a huge spike in the game. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just haven't played. I've been looking for something else that can kind of fill that super fast casual kind of need yeah it's a shame I, uh, because i feel like once in a while i feel like paladins would have been ideal for that like paladins is ideal for it. it's a shame it's not working but yeah um i yeah i can't i can't say anything bad about overwatch i really enjoy it I'm, i really do but i literally avoid competitive i don't play i don't even i don't play to place I, I really enjoy quick play. I enjoy not taking it seriously. And I think that whenever I get to a game and I start playing competitively, it ruins it for me. I just do not enjoy it at that point. That's exact. That is 100% what happened to me is yeah. that I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take my gameplay to the next level. And then that game was like, nope, fuck you, Arch Toasty. That is not going to happen. That's not in your life plan. That's just not a thing for you. So, and it had like, I used to enjoy Dota 2 a lot, and then I started playing that competitively, and then I started to hate it. Mm -hmm. So do it. I just, uh, it. I've been meaning yeah. to bounce back into that game, actually, and as just like as... a, a regular casual sort of level. But still, that game pisses me off in casual play. So I just, I don't know. An now, angry as, person, I as guess. Soon as, as soon as <laughs> I touch it. As soon as I take it, as soon as I take it seriously enough to even care about rank, that's when I'm out with the game. Like, as soon as I get to that point, there's no point. I, I have, I almost like, I almost have to like, I'm like a gaming nihilist, I think. Like, I have to not care. Like, I have to care if, like, I enjoy winning, obviously. I enjoy progression. But as soon as it becomes, like, something that matters, I'm like, it's not a game anymore. It's not, I don't want to play at that point. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, Bob is still, uh, Ashley's ultimate, Bob is still overpowered. Um, they will, if they follow suit, they will nerf the crap out of Ash when the new hero comes out. And then for the next three months, everyone will be saying about the new hero's overpowered. Yeah. 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 But, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, Hamish, I agree. People need to play the fucking objective. That was my terrible yeah. experience with Overwatch. I mean, I've, I mean, I've played Overwatch with Arch Toasty. He is fucking terrible. Like, he really is. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's that. <laughs> maybe, so may, maybe, you know, you never, you never stood it's, a chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The weird thing is, though, is when you're playing Overwatch, and, uh, like, a competitive player just hits quick play one day, and you just get steamrolled completely, because that one character, that one guy just, like, destroys your entire team. So you can always tell when someone plays that seriously, but, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that guy, man. I'm not that guy. Anyway, we're talking about Overwatch too much. Let's, uh, let's talk about, oh, I found this, I found this thing, um, there's this article. Now, I'm not going to go on about this. This is not something I want to go into depth with, but I found it, and I read this article on the BBC, uh, the BBC dot com forward slash news and this is an article and it actually had the whole thing happened like a couple of years ago like 2014 so i don't know why this is something the bbc's only picked up because i heard about this story like when it happened pretty much um but basically there's this disabled guy who like as lots of people do um lived his entire life inside an mmo um, and his family wasn't supportive then uh unfortunately due to medical complica medical complications um you know he passed away and it's only after after he died that his family found out about the life he led online with the internet and uh with his with his internet friends and this is not in any way related to linux guys like just preface that um 
but uh the the conversation that's had like in the interview here um and it's just a reprint it's not like i say it's weird that it's even on the website because like it, it, the bbc is a topical news website and this is from 2014 but uh this this uh interview they re they they reprint from a dutch newspaper um is really touching and interesting and it does highlight how important video games can be in all of our lives. I mean, more so for people with any form of disability and things where, you know, it, it, it's your it's the way you get out of the house. But uh, it's all very well done and, it, and the write-up is very honest. And I just thought I'd like to raise awareness of it and get people to take a look at it because I felt like it was a really good and powerful read. And it kind of gets across how much that, like, just because you're on the internet and just because it's not physical meat space um these people you meet the friends you make they're still friends you you battle together you fight together you, you know even if you're not in a clan and you're just in a chat group in a community like we tend to be um the bonds you forge are important and they're as real as any physical friendships and i think there's very few times when people like broach this as a topic and i just felt like this article kind of nailed the point and uh it's interesting how the sort of his family um, regret not taking part in that while they had the chance, and, it, and because they they just wasn't aware of of what was you know, they wasn't aware of this like almost like he was leading a double life, and uh, it's it's both sad and uplifting because it just shows how you know how the internet improved improves people's lives while at the same time unfortunately in this case it didn't end well you know and he really didn't have the support he needed while he was alive but uh, yeah anyway I'll uh, I'll flick that back to the top and uh, yeah definitely worth a read um, yeah I'll spam that again in chat. But, uh, any thoughts? Yeah. I mean, this proves that you, in fact, do have a heart. And that you are a human being. Uh, <laughs> Were no, you that's, suspicious? I mean, that's great. Uh, yeah. I, I'll actually have... I'm going to read that after uh, after the show today. I uh, I didn't get a chance to read it beforehand. Um, but no, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's what you said was incredibly true. Yeah. I mean... It's... Yeah yeah it's i mean i know for the that, fact like i i'm i'm not you know I, I i go out in the world i'm not i'm not limited in any way I, you know i I'm, I'm a function i'm a functioning adult and things but i still find i have uh more meaningful conversations with people i meet over the internet than people down the street and you know if if i if i did have a have some kind of um disability or something working against me which prevented me from that these bonds are matter even more like these bonds i make and matter so much more and uh, yeah, I just I just feel like it's like it's just I don't know it just it's food for thought I guess, but at the same time it makes you realise quite how powerful all the internet is as a tool for for you know allowing people to experience things. And yeah, the guys also sound like it was kick ass at World of Warcraft as well, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna have to check that out after the show. Yeah, I pasted, I pasted your link. Oh, thank you. Anyway. Yeah, you can pin that then. You won't lose it because I thank lose things. All. I get people to DM me the most random shit just so I can pin it. Um, it's, but yeah, uh, yeah, guys in chat. Yeah, appreciate your internet friends because they are real friends. Just because they're on the internet doesn't mean they're not. And don't don't get fooled into thinking that that real life friends. I mean, real life friends always matter more because you should always put life before internet. But if these where your friends are, they're real friends, you know. Um, you see what he says many many years yeah. ago i mean shit i got my job because of internet friends so i mean you say <laughs> friends but you are talking about pseudo shred so that doesn't really count ah true true i guess but um yeah internet friend internet friends very important very important Yep. Yeah. This real is... friends are also somewhat important. No, nah, internet I, friends. I wouldn't know about real friends to be honest. I wouldn't know. Sisu <laughs> uh, says many, many years ago, um, when he was uh, subscribed to World of Warcraft, mostly to have conversations with people in game while doing quests. Yeah. No, I, I, a hundred percent get that. What that? Yeah. This entire, the entire community I run through Discord and through the emails and through YouTube is based on the fact that I don't like, I don't like to get out much. I like to stay at home. I like it best, and uh, I also get lonely. So that you know, these two things would have been mutually exclusive at one point in time, but now they're not, which is nice. Stop hugging me! I'll show them on the dolly where you touched me. <laughs> uh, oh, despite work, this is sort of I probably did this in the wrong order, but related to the I anti cheat stuff. Um, PSA Apex uh, Legends worked wonderfully in Wine DXVK slash Proton. Um, it does not. It died uh, along with uh, Paladin, so I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but I've got everything stacked in the wrong order um, because I'm stupid. So, yeah. yeah. I wanted <laughs> to give that game a try. 
I literally don't know anything about it because it's a Windows only game. It's definitely not coming to Linux. I pretty much um I did this menu here where it's got the German for fuck off anti cheat don't want you. Um makes me go, Oh, that game looks <laughs> yeah, that's all I know about the game. That's it. I don't yeah, I don't know anything. So yeah, I can't say anything. But uh Yep, and there's also more I think the letter here the guy wrote has been linked here somewhere. I think it's probably one of these links here. But uh yeah, that's also happened. Which is a shame. It's a shame. But you know, I would hmm. I basically yeah. Other than Overwatch, well, other than Blizzard games, I don't use um, I don't actually use Wine for anything. I use Proton for everything now. And to be honest, I'd like to get to the point where I can just remove Wine off my system. I'd like to be an all Proton system. Um, if I could find a way to make the version of Proton that's baked into Steam work with um Overwatch, I'd probably just remove re completely system wide, just remove Wine because I don't need it anymore. But yeah. Probably not soon. That's probably what I would do as well. I mean, I need it for Overwatch and Fallout 4 because it doesn't, uh, <clears throat> even with all the, uh, the because I use Glorious Egg Rolls um, Proton build because yeah. uh, it has a bunch of like Windows other things Same. Like, compiled into it. So <laughs> it still doesn't work with that. So it, uh, yeah, Fallout 4 doesn't work with that, unfortunately. So it's like, meh. So, but yeah, no, I would do the same thing. I mean, if uh, Proton just worked for everything, then I would totally take wine off my system. I mean, not to hate on wine, but I mean, I just don't need it. No, I mean, no, I mean, that's the at thing. At that though. point, it would be to like emulate programs that I would need. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing though. By using Proton, you're not in any way disrespecting wine. I mean, because Proton is literally wine. I mean, it's literally wine. Um, there's some changes at this point, but it's still upstream wine. I mean, it's not like you're not using wine. You're still using wine. It's just the, the, the valve spin of it, the valve wine. The valve distro of wine, I suppose, maybe a good way of saying it. But yeah, it's it's, it's not... like the you know, valve cherry-picked wine. Yeah, it's not like you're using something freaky and something new. It's, it's still wine, and that's... I think that's fine because the only reason yeah. I want to do it is because I feel like um, wine across my system is a thing. Like sometimes you'll download, uh, you'll download next like a Windows executable and accidentally click on it too many times and it'll launch you like, for fuck's sake, you know you don't want that. And there's a lot of times where I just don't want or need what wine does, and I find it and more often than not it's just annoying when it starts loading. Like I literally loaded, uh, I did something to my system the other day and I loaded, uh, I loaded an image viewer and it decided the best way to show me this G this GIF was in internet explorer so i was like fuck sake wine why do, why do you even do that wine <laughs> like come on and then sometimes you'll open a dot tx down wine. yeah you'll open a txt file it'll be like you must want windows notepad no why would any human want windows yeah. notepad oh my god that happens to me all the time yeah yeah like why do they think any all human wants windows notepad no no even people on windows don't use it it's like <laughs> why would you anyway yeah i'm ranting again. this is me i've been very ranty this show been very very ranty um anyway uh green with envy i feel like i feel like that happens every time i get on here just go on like a tangent <laughs> Ca imagine. carry on green with envy green with envy. green with envy green with envy do you want to talk about green with envy because you probably understand this more than me uh actually i mean i saw like a couple of posts on it uh, apparently it's just like an nvidia overclocking tool yeah um but i haven't tried it or anything like that and i assume that it's just like a nice gui tool that just overclocks your gpu i might actually use it to underclock my gpu what? Uh, because it gets really hot at this point i think i need a new i think i need a new gpu actually um so this one's had quite the life so it uh yeah, I might underclock it a little bit because I don't need it so powerful all the time. Yeah. So keep the temperatures down and stuff like I mean, that. You, yeah, you can. You, That's what I. You can do things. Use. From what I understand, you can you can set staggered over. You can set like profiles and stuff. So you can do staggered overclock. So like you can have it so that when it goes to maximum speed, you can you can like make it go to maximum speed later or something. I think with this tool, I know you can in the Windows version with Windows version of cool bits. Hmm. I assume it's the same. Or you can change the fan profiles so you can make the fan go to 100% way quicker, which will stop your overheating problem. Which is the main point of these tools, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks like it basically. Oh like, shit! I might have to check that out then. Yeah. In fact, on the screen here, it's great. Now it's got the custom fan tool here now, where you like you basically when the temperature hits this percentage, turn the fan up to this percentage. Mm -hmm. So you just want it, you want it to just hit maximum way quicker, and that should stop you from ever generating that much heat in theory. But uh, you might also find a can of air will do the job because it did for me. But, uh, what's my what's my uh... that's interesting yeah i'm definitely gonna have to check that out now because i saw it and was like oh i could probably use this to underclock it because i don't really need it so powerful but uh 
yeah, I'll just crank the fans up all the time. I was I was good, about to say Maximum for some reason overdrive. For some reason, my GPU is at fifty six degrees, and then I realized I've got The Sims three loaded on different screen still. Um, so that'll be why my GPU is hot and my CPU is at seventy three degrees because The Sims just chucking on back there. I hope she's not dead. I hope she hasn't killed herself. I left her alone too long. She just like like didn't pee until she exploded or something because what well, yeah trapped her in like a bathroom or something I'm worried, like that I'm worried, I'm worried about it now that's what i used to do in the old sims too it's just think of the most interesting ways to kill my sims so i i i want i mean i really shit everywhere. yesterday when i was streaming and i was making the world's largest kitchen um matt pointed out that it might be i think it was matt or rob pointed out that it might be fun to see if we can turn her into a serial killer like like give her the taste for blood so even when you don't do anything she just goes around murdering stuff because like the police in The Sims turn up, and unless they see the crime, they just leave. Like, literally, a burglar got into a police car in my save game. Well, that was on stream. A burglar came, and the policeman got out, walked past the burglar, and went, there's no burglar in here, while the burglar got in the police car. I was like, that's, what the fuck, police? What the fuck, Steam? What the, what the, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> it actually happened on stream. It was ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, if you're interested, I haven't tried it either. I'm, I'm, my, my GPU is a 970. Uh, it's a... Mm gigabyte 970 gamer edition so it's already factory overclocked um so to be honest i ain't gonna get much more out of it safely so i'm probably never gonna touch this um because the factory overclocks on gigabyte on the gigabyte windforce See, cards I... are pretty good i only have a 980 i think like a 980 gold edition or something like that um so i mean it comes overclocked as well yeah. so but like i said dude when i play overwatch on like even I don't know if I kick it up to high, it gets like eighty degrees, like eighty degrees Celsius, which is real hot. So, but it's gotten, I would say, a lot of use in its lifetime. So, yeah, my, I mean, I used to be glorious egg rolls. I bought it off of what? him, so I can only imagine uh, oh, the amount wow. of gaming that he's he did done, on it before he's I did. He's fucking done things to that card. Then, in that case, he's done stuff to that card. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that dude, like that dude, thing, like he Show burns me on the card hardware. where they touched you. Yeah, the little, the all over, just everywhere, just. <laughs> <laughs> and inside it's you know it's wrong um yeah the uh i think i think like i've said again i say this a lot but like i'd like to change my 970 i'd like I've, I've, i'd love to but there's no sensible upgrade path from a 900 series like there's there's nowhere to go like i don't play enough triple a games to give a shit and most of the stuff i play is like you know the sims is literally 10 years old i played doom you know it's ridiculous yeah i'm like right there every every game i've ever tried to play i can actually i mean i can play in ultra yeah. on overwatch uh yeah, me I mean, too. If I'm, especially if i'm not streaming or something but yeah dude every game that i can play i can play on ultra and it hasn't hindered my the way yeah. my game looks in any way so i mean why not just keep it yeah that, yeah that's kind of how i am as well um anyway uh steam awards tell us about the steam awards you, you care you well you care enough to even look at this i didn't <laughs> care enough to even look but. So I did, in fact, and I was like, hey, this is going to be real cool. Because I was That's like, the not. Steam Award, I don't know why the fuck I thought this, honestly. I was like, oh, you know, it'll be like an, you know, like a, an event, like there'll be hosts and there'll be like a stage and they'll be like, oh, oh well. and these are the nominees. Oh, the envelope opens and there will be actual hosts. And nope. This shit is just a 17 minute long YouTube video. Like that's literally all it is. And then one thing that I've definitely learned from this is that only triple a titles can win and also game developers are not funny and have no capacity for comedy um yeah that's uh that was just terrible i mean if you just scroll down and look at the winners of it i mean it's just like dude how dude PUBG won game of the year like that that's it just don't walk away from it now that's it PUBG won game of the year like please dude come on uh, and then, yeah, all the other games are, they're all AAA titles. Um, and they're all from the, I mean, CD Projekt Red won best environment and best, um, but they, I think like developer or something like but that. Like, which, I mean, they I haven't be, even released but... a game in 2018. That's ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. Like, dude, none of these games that won anything were released in 2018. Like, that's what I thought. Like, I thought that at least the games would have to be released in 2018 it's like not nah, just games on steam if it's on steam it's eligible so yeah they're game of the year battlegrounds like what the fuck i mean best, I'm... yeah best vr game skyrim <laughs> i mean this is what i expected and that, like it, go back to the labor of love games you'll see yeah it's like you'll see that they, there are like indie developers that got nominated for it but especially the labor of love one that makes me so mad 
uh, because it's just like, dude, look at the nominees for that game. Okay, Stardew yeah. Valley, even No Man's Sky. Mm-hmm. Like I feel, or Path of Exile. Path of Exile definitely should have won. Um, but yeah, I don't know why the fuck Dota 2 is on there. But it, it's Grand Theft Auto Five. Like what the fuck? Like come on. So that was just, and yeah, I actually sat down and watched the entire YouTube video, and it was total shit. I mean, it, I guess like it had some production value put into it, and they had like messages from the winners, but I, it was dumb. It was so I mean, dumb. Like I don't know why I had such high expectations for it. Honestly, No Man's Sky winning Labor of Love yeah, would have made only... sense because like they've put so much work post release with a big patch that came in 2018. It would have actually at least made sense with, with no man's sky because no man's sky is good now as well you should totally check no, it I out i agree it's good yeah um yeah best i do want to check it out i do actually want to check it out uh and yeah falmir i don't know like there's only like eight categories or something like that and it's just like dude what the heck like who came up with this stuff like there should be way more categories like i don't know i feel like if they had turned this into like an actual awards show thing like it, they, they could have done so much with it like they could have played like some sort of ads or they could have made some money off of it i mean i guess not that valve needs the money but it could have been like a fun event type show you know what i mean there could be somebody like coming on and like they won something oh yeah by the way this is an announcement for like an upcoming game or like it could have been I don't know. I feel like it could have been a platform for so much more, but they were just like, hey, here's your stupid award for these like six categories. So, I mean, the problem here I mean, is that like, game, first of all, um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I always forget is even on Steam, which is weird to me because every time I see it, I'm like, is that even out? Is that even a thing? But yeah. Um, no, I mean, the problem is with games is they're supposed to be fun. And if you start doing award shows for things that are fun, you suck the joy out of it. Like, you know, like if, if, if a game developer, like I think more game developers should make their own shows. They should make their own events and, you know, not like just celebrate what they're, celebrate their creativity. Be like, we made this game. We're really proud of it. You know, we're doing like, a, we're having dinner and we're talking about it. And here's some people we met in the process and here's our art. Go, you know, they should celebrate their own shit. You know, we don't, they don't need to, we don't need award shows. We don't, we don't need, we're not the Oscars. These award shows, they're a throwback of old media which is like television and movies and newspapers. Nah. We don't need that. We're new media. We don't need that. We, you know, if anyone, anyone can make a fucking, I mean, I did an awards show, you know, like, like I did an end of year best of show. We're all capable of it. We don't need this. We never needed this. It's dumb. It's like comedy awards. It's fucking stupid. Sorry, I'm ranting again. Yeah, no, Hamish is 100% right with what he said. They make up the categories to fit the games they already decided were going to win. This is just an industry backslapping. Yeah, I mean, this is that's 100% true. 100%. Because I mean, there's so many indie games that could have won in place of these. I mean, best alternative history, there's like there's literally like four games that could have won that and accurately, right? I, yeah, most fun with the machine. I doubt Rocket League is what they expected to win that one, to be honest. Um Best with friends. It seems like they they had a category, so each AAA each AAA publisher had a really good chance of winning in each category. That's how it seems to me. Um, that 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 would be it. But yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's fucking pointless either way. Yeah. Um, I played Assassin's Free, Assassin's Creed Odyssey free on Google Stream Project, um, and in no way should it win any awards. It was just outright. Yeah, it was just oh, it was just all right, not outright. There you go. Change the font. Um, yeah, I. I have mm. no idea what it's about. I saw a video someone made where they got a boat to shoot directly up in the air like a rocket because of a bug, and that made me laugh a lot, and then I forgot about the game. So, yeah, that's all I know about it. Hmm. Mario See, Odyssey I thought was that great. we were still on the desert one. Like, I think that was the Mario one. Odyssey was great. That was a great game. Mario Odyssey was really good. Mario the, I don't know, like Origins, Assassin's Creed. Or, I thought we were still on that one. I, I'm like you. Every time I see that game, I was like, oh, did that? ready so it's uh apparently like was it like greece or something like that like old greece and i whatever i are you now like after the boat video you now know everything i know about assassin's creed games in general other than they seems to release one about every hour and a half <laughs> like if i like in the time we've been recording this show yeah. two assassin's creed games have been released that's how fucking ridiculous this is <laughs> that's honestly that is that is ridiculous but yeah that's how i feel about uh, uh about far cry as well like i feel like they're just always coming out with a new far cry game at this point because the new ones are i think it's coming out like next month or something like that i so, thought why well, which know. one's this one which one is this the Crazy. one with the is this the one with the religious people 
Is that is that all? No, this is they're already on to the next one right now. I think really it's okay. Something well, about I'm not sure what it is. I'll have to look it up. I don't even know. I don't care. I'm so far. Like you think running a YouTube channel that focuses on gaming, I'd be better informed. But like you know, <laughs> just no, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. <laughs> so wow, there's only like two Far Cry. There's the original Far Cry. Oh, Far Cry two, Far Cry, Far Cry two. Then Far Cry 5. They're the only Far Cry games on Steam. Yeah, it's called Far Cry New Dawn. Okay, it's like a post-apocalyptic okay. game. It's called Far Cry New Dawn. I don't, I don't know any of this. The post-apocalypse never looked so colorful. Wait, isn't yeah. that, isn't I don't know. That, I've never played any like, Far Cry. Post-apocalypse post never looked so colorful. Isn't that a tagline for like Rust 2? Uh, for, sorry, for not Rust 2. For um, uh, Rage 2? It's got that tagline as well. Hmm, I have no idea. Yeah, no I think, clue. from what I understand, Hamish, each game has no connection to the previous one. Like, Far Cry is a system of, of things rather than a character. From my understanding, which again is probably wrong, it's like Far Cry means you're one dude versus an army. That's like the principle of the game. There's nothing, each game is totally separate. There was fucking one set, there was one set in caveman times, and you was following bears and shit, so, you know, they, they oh, have, yeah. yeah. Far Cry Primal, I yeah, think that's what it was called. But yeah, I thought that was like, expansion, though. Like a woolly mammoth or some shit. Okay, I, I found uh, them. I had to put a space in between my Far Cry. I think it was a full game. It was, yeah, no, when I first saw it, I assumed it was expansion. <laughs> yeah, Far Cry Primal. Um, we've got Far Cry, so we've got Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn, Far Cry Primal, Far Cry 4, Far Cry, Far Cry 3, Far Cry Blood Dragon, which is the only one I have. It's the only Far Cry game I own because it has 80s metal and machine guns. Um, I never played it. I've never bothered playing it. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that like the, uh, I don't know, like the cyberpunk-ish one or something like that? Yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like an 80s, it's like, it's like 80s, it's like if someone made a sci-fi in the 80s, that's Far Cry Blood Dragon as I understand it. And I bought it because it sounded amazing. And then <clears> I, I just could never get working in wine and I just gave up on it after that. So, you know, I tried, I tried. Aww. Like I said, they're all on there. You just If you're looking for Far Cry, you've got to put that gap between the Far and Cry. Steam can't work it out otherwise. It's a mystery to Steam. You know, it just it cannot figure it out without that. It's like Far Cry with, like, like with no gap, it finds two of them. Far Cry with, with gaps, it finds five of them. So, you know, yeah. yeah. It does work. It does work, it does work now, does it? Does it work through Proton now? Oh, it, it does work. Nice. Can I, just, can I just run that in Proton now? Because hmm. I kind of do want to play Blood Dragon. Because it's, you know, 80s movie and Yampy. It was also really cheap when it came out. I mean, it looks good. It does look good. Let's just find the page. Let's just, this series doing the work for us. This series, this series doing the work. Okay, it looks great. I mean, I've, I've got same Thank use on this series. browser. But yeah. I mean, I've got the same use in this browser, but let's imagine some like hair metal air guitar shit going on. Uh, yeah. Okay, it, worked <laughs> out. it was fixed ages ago. This is how much shits I give. It was fixed ages ago, apparently. So yeah. Maybe I should, maybe I should play this this week. Yeah. So the, it's set in 2007, Ooh. which is the future, which was actually, it was released in like 2013, so it was the past even when it's released. But like, the, there was hammering home how much it's like retro future stuff, and there's neon. Yeah, it looks great. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to try this tonight. Wow. Yeah, it looks fucking gnarly. Do it. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Dude, this it, does look good. Yeah, wow. right? All That's right. why I bought, I literally bought it like Is it like, like a full ago. game though? Yeah, it's like, well, it's like. It's like not like is a, it full, like a game. full game. I think it's like half a Far Cry game, like like a really chunky Far Cry expansion, but it stands alone. It's a standalone thing. But it's a Far Cry three expansion, but it's a standalone title. Okay, oh, you just okay, yeah. Okay. I, I don't I don't understand any of this shit. I just know that it had like it had like you get a robot hand for fuck's sake. Come on, it's it's everything you want in the game. It's a game made for hexes, so you know. Uh, you play it on you play. I, I think it looks like so. it. Yep, it's so good. So hmm. good in this place. Anyway, do you have anything to add or should we call it a day on this wonderful episode of X Penguin? I have nothing to add. That was Yay! it. We did That's it. We got through. Tips. We got through. So uh, this week, uh, what can we see from what can we see from uh, our good friend Arch Toasty this week? What's gonna happen on the world of Arch Toasty this week? Uh, I'm definitely gonna play the shit out of some war groove. Uh, I'm probably just gonna play that until i beat it and then hopefully someone else will buy it and then i can play multiplayer with it so oh, that's gonna be me this i week. really want i really want to buy it i really I, no i can't i can't spend too much on sims dlc i can't buy it i'll 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 just i'll just wait. <laughs> you spent your whole but you spent your whole game budget on sims dlc <laughs> I, i'm not even joking i've spent like 40 pounds on sims dlc 
Like, I literally, I bought some the other night, and then tonight I was like, fuck it, I'm buying the rest. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I'm like, yeah. Speaking of which, that, how's it doing? She's not dead. She's not dead. Update. She's not dead. I just checked. No, not dead. Yeah. Um, that's the wrong window. Uh, so if, if war group, so I'm playing some war group this week. Uh, you gonna be streaming? You gonna be streaming this week as well? You gonna be streaming it? Yes. Yeah, I'll be streaming uh, war group. Definitely that. So I'm not quite sure what else I'll play, but definitely I'll be streaming that because it's real good. That game's real good. I'll probably start it over uh, on stream. I'm only a couple hours into it, but it's real good. It's real good. I look forward to seeing. It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in. With that. I'm gonna watch some of that. I need to see more of this game. Let me jump in a bit. Um, I this week, Hexy this week. I'm gonna be. What am I gonna be doing? I'm gonna be playing a lot of The Sims. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then hopefully I can get out my system by the time I stream this week. Uh, by next week. But uh, I think I'll be. I think I don't know. I kind of. I kind of want to stream something I've never played before. I'm in that mood at the minute. I'm like, I need to stream. I want to stream something I've never played before, and I want to play all on stream. So I might, I might start um, Prey, the the more recent one. I might start that. I might start. I've, I've played about the first twenty mm. minutes of it, so I might start again. That I might start that for refresh and just play the whole thing on stream over like two or three days. Um, that's probably what I'm doing this week on stream, um, and then obviously that'll influence my videos. Um, yeah, obviously. And uh, I feel like I might actually. This is pretty bad, but I'm actually going to make a video about The Sims Three this week. I'm going to put my thoughts about The Sims Three on video, um, which should be fun. And uh, for anyone that's interested in the other stuff I do, um, I have got some stuff ready to post on the Groff subreddit I run. Um, so if you're interested in typesetting and Vim stuff, um, there'll be about three tutorials going up on there, hopefully, in the next seven days or so. I'll stagger them out. So, you know, but there'll be some tutorials going on there, including how to render Japanese fonts as soon as I finish working it out, because that's something people actually asked for. So, yeah, um, that's what we're doing there. So that's me done anyway. So should we call it a day? Are we done? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everyone. You can get uh, me at all the usual places, um, and I'm next streaming where Thursday evening. Um, but you can get videos from me Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Thanks for watching. I love you all very much. Goodbye. Bye.